welcome to the No Budget Indie Filmcast, where we dip into the independent film universe to highlight those little films that you might not have heard about elsewhere. Will you agree with our panel, or will our panel agree with each other? Tune in to find out. I am Milo Dennison, and with me, as always, is Claire Milan. Hello. And Cahal Feeney. Hello. Claire, what is on the agenda this week? So this week, we sat down to watch a film called Force Majeure. It's directed by Ruben Oslund, directed and written by Ruben Oslund, starring Johannes Ba Konke, excuse my pronunciation, that's Swedish, and uh, Lisa Loven Kongsley. <laughs> Kongsley. Lisa Loven Kongsley. And it's, um, it's really unusual because I actually set out to watch Downfall with Will Ferrell and I mix this film up with Downfall. So this is the, the original film and Downfall is actually based on this, is an English version of it. So when I went on YouTube thinking this starred Will Ferrell, I was like, oh no, I rented the original in Swedish and Norwegian with subtitles. I didn't mean to. So it's like, oh no, no, I didn't want to watch subtitled film. And I just sat down and I absolutely love this film. It was such a delight. It's a dilemma I think a lot of people would have came across. So it's about a couple called um, Thomas and Eva, and they've two young children and they're in a ski resort in France. And they're sitting in a restaurant and there is a controlled explosion. So loads of smoke and fog and and they everyone thinks that there's an avalanche heading towards them. So the husband runs and takes his phone and runs away from his family, literally abandoning his family. And that's the premise this film is based on. So the wife is wondering, did he abandon the family? Did he run away from them? He's, he's kind of debating, oh, no, I didn't. You know, I, I, I stayed. And it's, it's a really fascinating dilemma. So if we are in a situation where, you know, maybe there's, something happens, do we run towards our family or do we protect ourselves? And that's the premise of the whole thing. And I thought the humor in it, the the visuals, I know the writer director, Ruben, he actually made some ski films before, I think ski short films. And so this is kind of his feature film. So he knew he knew a lot about skiing. And um, I thought it was, yeah, really, really good acting really well told and such an interesting dilemma. Uh, so it was selected as a Swedish entry for the 87th Academy Award, uh, but it was only shortlisted. It wasn't nominated. And it has, um, I think it's a 94% um, rating on Rotten Tomatoes. And one of the things I say when the critics, it's gleefully uncomfortable, a relationship drama that's difficult to watch, but hard to ignore. And that really sums up this film. So what did you guys think of it? Yeah, it is an interesting because we all think that if we're put in a dramatic situation, we'd do the right thing and be the hero and be like, protect the family or do whatever. But they call it out in, in the conversations in the film is like, when you're in an emergency, all you're doing is reacting and you're not thinking. And, it, it, and it's kind of funny. I, I was in a car wreck once and it was kind of that same thing. The car was rolling. And when we stopped rolling, I didn't even think, I just instantly reacted of like, pull keys out, kick door open, get out of car, pull it, you know, like and before my brain slowed down enough to actually react of like what was going on. And, and so, so it is funny that that happens. And in this situation, you could you could sympathize with the guy and be like, okay, maybe if I were in that situation, my brain would just say run. Uh, what makes it funny and the humor comes from, of course, his attitude after the fact of like, what? I think you remember this situation completely different. <laughs> uh, so it's yeah, it's really nice. It's a it's a nice relationship piece. I, I um yeah, and and lovely shot. It just kind of nice soft lighting throughout, and just um the it it, it is. I felt it was a bit long at points. I mean, the film's like two hours long, uh, which is pretty long for comedy, but it I shouldn't nick on it too much because it does work with the pacing and the way he paces it because you kind of just get these dramatic long sequences of just kind of absurdity 
that kind of kind of work for the film, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It was it, and and <laughs> and they're terrible parents, by the way. Oh. I really feel like I need to call them out for just being awful, awful parents across the board. Just terrific, you know. <laughs> Actually, the visuals were great in it, like the hotel and the look of it. So just even the music is kind of reminds you of the lobster a little bit. And the pace. Um, yeah, and it's I loved your man in it. He's from Game of Thrones, the big redhead like lad. You know, the, oh, the big yeah, giant. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's in the the Will Ferrell one as well. But the Harry the Will Ferrell one is supposed to be terrible, but I haven't seen it. Just so. <laughs> but it's, well, I'm, yeah. I'm, um, I'm pretty surprised that you you labeled it as a comedy, you know, because uh I didn't find it funny. I mean I, I, I kind of found it uncomfortable, you know, more than anything funny. Um, and that scene where he runs away, like, you know, and, and and pretends that he didn't run away, like, I think he was just, he, he must have known, you know, he was just trying to save himself, you know, protect his ego, because, you know, he he didn't want to be, you know, exposed as a sort of, I mean, uh, somebody who would run away from his family and a uh, sort of a coward, you know. But uh, like it is, it is interesting that it kind of looks at this, you know, how, how the, the the true nature of people is revealed, you know, in an extreme circumstance, you know, and it's it's either that or when you're when you're really drunk, I suppose. But the, um, like for for the woman, it kind of ha- it forces her to to uh, re-examine her relationship. You know, does she really know this person? But at the same time. She's she's struggling with the whole thing because you can see just she's really content with her life, the choices that she's made. You know, just like you know, they have this comfortable sort of nuclear family, um, you know, husband that loves her, so she thought. And you can see she's 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 looking for answers. She, she's very reluctant to give up on this, you know. Um, and for the guy, it's it's a moment of self awareness too, and he's not very happy with what he finds, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I thought, I thought that scene where he he's kind of on the balcony and he he claims he's a victim too, and as well as as admitting her infidelities, you know. I thought, well, that's the end of it, you know. Like that's over. So I, I was I was a little bit in, in unconvinced at the way they were able to turn it around and you know make him a bit of a hero and you know that uh, they all live happily ever after almost, you know. Yeah, I have to agree. Uh, when when we were watching it, I kind of said that too, and, and was like, "It's kind of a cop out for the ending there a little bit," and, and because all of their actions prior to that don't really lead to that as an ending. And they're like, "Okay, well, we 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 have to redeem him in some way, so let's do this, so that that way, you know, he doesn't end the film as being a jackass." Uh, so, so it, yeah, I, I do agree with that assessment. Do you know what's funny for the, we won't spoil anything, but the scene. Well, I mean, what? <laughs> you won't spoil anything. But we'll, for we'll the scene. This one has mild spoilers. As mild, mild spoilers. But you know the scene yeah. on the bus, there is a scene on a bus and it's actually taken exactly from a YouTube video. The director saw this happen on YouTube oh, and that inspired him. Yeah. And another thing as well, the scene that Kyle has behind him, there's a really good uh, YouTube video about how they film that. They're brushing their teeth in front of a mirror. So uh, can you guess how they filmed it? Uh, yeah. Was it? A... Are they in front of a mirror at all? Yeah, because if they obviously if the camera's in front of the mirror. In front of a two-way mirror maybe, or... I, I think the camera, it was uh, like, literally the camera is there, but they actually got rid of it in post. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Because people are trying to, people are debating. Move. Yeah, because it, sometimes it's really tricky to film in, in a mirror, you know, and sometimes it's green screen and sometimes because yeah. it was directly, but it was, yeah, really good tutorial on YouTube. Or a, a person made a video about it and, and, and that saying, makes sense, like, how this. Yeah. Between them. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. I can mm. see that. Yeah. All right. That's creative. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I, I mean, just After Effects or something. Mm-hmm. It's funny that um, that they the American version is called Downfall after the Hitler film. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, Force oh, yeah. Force Majeure is a great title. Yeah, like because mm-hmm. uh, because I I looked it up and it's uh, 
you know, it's 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 a it's a legal term that that um that a contract is null and void you know if there's some something extreme in, in an extreme circumstance you know like an act of god so it's almost like there that your man gets a pass on you know failing his family because it was an avalanche you know it was an extreme circumstance yeah yeah or sometimes you can take force majeure for a day say if like something happens if you're working and then something happens like suddenly you can take a force majeure so i didn't know what it was until i was working somewhere and i was like what's that yeah so it's, mm. it's yeah it's like an act of god something happens that you have to take a day off so it's yeah mm. yeah they obviously don't want people to look up force majeure so it was he was ripped off from a from a superior <laughs> Swedish film. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, you, something else I didn't mention is I like the way that it plays with stereotypes and questions those stereotypes too, mm -hmm. of the fact that, you know, the man is supposed to be, you know, the savior and the, the you know, that the manly type and the woman's the, the nurturer and all this kind of stuff. And, um, and kind of how they call that out in this, especially that scene where they're all just kind of crying together. Yeah. And, and you know the kids are like crying too, and I and I, I was like, I was I kind of joked that I'm like, uh, the kid probably yelled out, "You're no longer a man, Dad. <laughs> like you're, I have I lost respect for you." Yeah. Because the you know the kids they're they're you're taught to look to your father as this like you know Dad doesn't cry and Dad doesn't admit failure and that kind of stuff. So, and it does explain a little bit of his behavior as well. So it was nice. <laughs> The way they kind of questioned a lot of that. and and the same thing with the conversation with the guy from um game of thrones mm -hmm. and the girl he was with that conversation there's, mm -hmm. something to it. there's one creepy yeah. scene in it that kind of threw um, me off do you know when the cleaner was there's kind of a cleaner guy and he's looking at them all the time kind of judging them and then they the parents come back and they show up the children into the room while they're standing outside not realizing <laughs> the cleaners in there and i all of a sudden i was like in here <laughs> oh my god what's happening and they were like mommy daddy there's something in here yeah and it was for a second i was like oh my god where is this gonna go you know just you know but um yeah so that was kind oh, of a mad first scene first parents first parents <laughs> yeah. i thought i thought that, that the cleaner guy like he was an interesting character because he, mm -hmm. he was recurring and i get the feeling that he was he well he was almost symbolized the sort of this this new kind of ugly rift, this crack in their marriage, you know. So every time they went out at the balcony to talk about it, he was there. And they wanted him to go away. <laughs> just like they wanted the problem to go away. You know? so yeah. Was, yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Should we rate it? Yeah. Sure. Call. Okay. I'll go. I'll go ahead one go over it, Scott. Um, yeah, I mean, I really liked it. I'd, I'd, I'd heard about it, and I was, uh, I was, I was, I was glad you mentioned it. Um, and uh, yeah, like it was, it was as, as a sort of an idea. It's really, it's really interesting. But I was, I was going to say before we go on to the ratings, like, like you see, you see that like, people's sort of self-preservation does kick in in certain circumstances. You know, like if there's a you know, you say a stampede or something like that, you know, people will run over people to escape, you know. Um, but I, th I think, I really do think in this circumstance, y your natural reaction would be, like he was right beside that kid, you know. It would almost been easier to just grab him and run, you know. <laughs> and I, th I think as people, I mean, there was a video, an online video to Indian in India, a guy jumped onto a railway track and rescued a, a child that had fallen yeah. in, you know, and do it like, and I think, I think, I think it is sort of, I think sort of inbuilt into us because, you know, preserving the human race, you know, protect the next generation, like almost, yeah. So um, I, I think in this circumstance, you know, he probably would have, you know, grabbed, grabbed his boy anyway, you know, but, um, and, I, and, it, and it was quite long. And I think they did try to like, you know, find a way to sort of stretch this out. I mean, I, I, I think in, in, a, in, a, in a real life situation, I'm not sure they would have continued the holiday. You know, They would have just taken the kids. She would have taken the kids and gone home, you know, end the film, or they you know, would have relocated back to Sweden and uh, continued the story from there. But anyway, um, like I, I, did, I did enjoy it and uh, it was well done. So I will give it four stars. Okay. All right, I'll go next. Um... 
Yeah, I'm really tossed up on this. Like, I, I did like it, but for some reason, I feel like I don't think it deserves all that high of a rating for some reason. And yeah, uh, I'm going to go three and a half. I'm really torn between three or four. And I know I, I rant against half stars and I've done like a couple in a row now, uh, but uh, it's very close to four stars, but also very close to three stars. It's one of those movies. I think if I had like a week, cause I just watched it yesterday. Uh, I think if I had a week to sit on it, I probably mm -hmm. could commit to a rating. Um, yeah. But uh, based on my immediate reaction of, from yesterday, I'm going three and a half. Okay. For me, it is a fascinating premise to base a film on that one split second decision can change everything and can just create a whole discussion and argument and can break up a marriage. That's what I find fascinating. I love the visuals, absolutely some stunning cinematography and, and the music and the, the really kind of the, the, the understated acting as well, which I thought was really good, but it was overly long and I did kind of fall asleep in the middle of it slightly, you know, <laughs> Sorry. you know, cause I'm a bit tired, but I, I will give it four stars. It is everyone's watched the film. It's available to rent now on YouTube. Definitely go to see it. And this is the one to watch, not the one with Will Ferrell. All right. Well, there you have it. No budget film cast audience. We pretty much liked it or th those two liked it. I kind of liked it. It's hard to tell. Let us know what you think. It is available on YouTube at the moment. So go watch it before it's gone and let us know what you think via at no budget show on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. That's become your new sign. <laughs> it really has. It's the worst <laughs> I really need to stop saying that. You got these names right now. <laughs> the last time it was just terrible. Oh, yeah, have fun with that. Jesus, my writing is just so horrific. Sorry. <laughs>